only and there is some flashing you will have errors so I always go vapor liquid it's the safe way now we can run no errors no warnings as you can see there let's add a vapor no vapor changes so still cool let's add this pressure changer we want to decrease the pressure how do we do that is via the ball so let me move this one right here this will be ball and let's add this this will be l ball i think yeah l Elbow. Now one important part right here guys, let's see that we forget or we don't know that we need to specify something to the bulb. So we just go click here next and what Aspen does is it brings you to the next output. It will not run the simulation. Actually the run button is not actual, actually clickable. So what does it state? You must specify outlet pressure or, and not only that, it must be greater than 1. So here, guys, you cannot state zero because, because this is a pressure changer. So pressures are a little bit more sensitive here. So what we are going to do is add a 1.0, as is stated here. 1.0 bar, vapor liquid steel. And here is very important because some flashing will occur. So ensure that you selected this. Click here, next, and run. No errors, no warnings. Doesn't mean that we are not getting our results so let's check out the paper fraction and as i told you guys there is a little bit amount of vapor one percent which is okay one percent will not be that critical so we can ensure that this was correct if this was maybe five ten percent then you will need to ensure to either cool down more or add another separator to ensure that all this is going as a vapor okay guys now what's next we gotta remember that this is our final product or liquid product and we have two plants. Plant number one has 70% requirement and the other remaining goes to the second plant. So let's go here and as you can see we're doing just mass balances here, no operation at all, but still we need to add a new one. Splitter or no split. Now, I actually don't like this bottom, so how can we change it? If you don't change it directly from here, you can right click hit, right click this bottom and exchange icon. I don't like this one, so keep changing. I don't know, this is not heat, this is not work. This is what I wanted. Now, double click. Actually, let's use this right here, which right now might be tedious to go right here but many times it's pretty useful to just go here and say I don't care what's the ending where's the finishing line I just want to add a destination and you just do it this way now you require at least one product line so let me you can if you click this you can move it this is very convenient especially if you're going to do a recycle you can do this if you're going to have it product right here you can do it or you want to send this down here and look look at this this is blue doesn't mean that we cannot add and you know this is a splitter so our main goal is to add two lines so this will be product line product for plant one and uh, let me move this one right here I don't like this, so click a line, always. Always when you have some sketchy streams, you can click here, a line, and it will be fixed. Typically, because not always work. Also, you can select the streams like these, you can move them, and so on. Okay, guys, now let's say we forget once again that we need to specify the splitter. We're going to the splitter, but let me show you what happens when you want to go via this here you're checking the blocks you see the cooler is fine you see the flash is okay valve is okay and you see that the splitter got to be specified and you want to see what exactly so this form the input form 
So we got to specify, we don't need to add flash options, no comments, only specify the split fraction or flow rate or limit flow, or you have plenty of things you can add here. So right now we know that 70% is going through here. No need to state that 30% goes here. This is the nice thing on Aspen. It will calculate the remaining data and let's run the simulation. Now let's, let's try to use this button instead of next. And let's get rid of our vapor fraction right here. What's happening here is that 19 moles for out of 100 moles are going through here. So let me go with results. So what do we have here? Right now I'm pretty interested on the mole flow rates. Okay, and let's compare with the feed. So most of this is going, most of the attain goes through here. Let me add also this one up here. You can see, I would love to have a calculator here. So five times two is seven, 8.3 out of nine. This is two plus four, this is 6.7 out of seven. And you can see how all it's distributed. And not only that, if you were talking about maybe you want to see the bulb line, you can see it as well, and so on. Why do we have the same fractions even though we have different streams? Well, according to mass balances, we are not changing anything. The bar here is just splitting, so they should have the same flow rate. Good. Now let's get a little bit more interesting. Let's say that we have a membrane that separates hydrogen, methane, and all other hydrocarbons. Okay, so we have several options to model this part right here the membrane and we can either select for any mass transfer process we can select three types of unit operations separators which can be flash 2, 3, decanter, sep 1 and sep 2 you can add columns which are essentially based on equilibrium those are for absorbers, distillations and so on so this doesn't work and we got user models actually if you were previously model a membrane, you can add your user model and you will be able to model this membrane. So unfortunately, we don't have membranes or something like that. So we will need to go for set one, just because we know the compositions, just because we know that this membrane gets rid of all the hydrogen, this membrane gets separated all the methane maybe because of its size or polarity we don't know how this this membrane is working but we do know that this is separating this don't you love it that you know sometimes that even though you don't know the concept behind it you can still model it still calculate it and let me show what's the big deal with this membrane right here what I'm going to do is to show you what's, how can we set up the splitter or the SEP into a splitter of mass transfer. So we got three streams. Hydrogen stream, we, do, we can add plenty of things, split fraction, flow rates, and so on. I want to ensure the split fraction that I always get 1.0 amount or 100% of hydrogen and all others are zero. This membrane will not have any value. Of course, if you have more realistic values that you recover 98% of the hydrogen and maybe 80% of the methane and 20%, yeah, add it. Now, please ensure that this, not, this, this column right here doesn't need to sum up one. This is based on the recovery. I'm recovering 98% of the inlet of the hydrogen. Or in this case, I'm recovering all the hydrogen. So it will be kind of funny if I go, so ensure that you have this. And it will be kind of funny and state here that I also have 100% recovery of my methane. So I stated before, I cannot have a one here because 100% is already going through all the other streams. So I'm going to add zero because that's what's happening. But please ensure 
that the materials are material balances are happening right now. C1 is methane, so all the methane goes here, and all of the other hydrocarbons are not included. And probably you're wondering, we gotta state this? No, because we already stated two out of three streams. This stream will be calculated by itself. Okay, so no need. As you can see, it's now fully defined blue one. Let's go here. If we don't state this one, then what Aspen is going to do is to, going to assume where did they go. Okay, now let's run just for the sake of having the results. Oops, I changed this. This is 2.5. Let's rerun 25 Celsius. This is based on pressure. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was verifying some warnings on this right here, but you should have this. Also, please note that the membrane gotta be supplied with this heat flow. So I said before, guys, I told you, you don't know how those things work, but thermodynamically, you don't know how, but you gotta remove that. I don't know how it's happening. If this has maybe a condenser, a double condenser, or are they exchanging heat with the air? Or with their surrounding, you don't know it, but you gotta remove this amount. Contrary to here or here, and so on. So let's analyze this part right here. We got 30, 20, and 24. So the best way to analyze this goes directly to the memory. Click on stream results. Stream results are three. It's this one over here, this one over here, and this one right here. And the inlet. So this is the inlet. With more flows. Okay, so we got 29.98. It's going through the hydrogen stream, not their material. That's awesome. It worked. All the methane is going through here. And all the remaining hydrocarbons, maybe because they are heavier or longer in chains, they go through here. So this is our main product line, guys. Probably you're wondering what is our product. Well, this is also very important. And as stated here, in the membrane, we are, oops, what do we have here? We have something interesting right here. So as stated before, I didn't add some of the C2, so that happens in real life. So this will be the best case scenario when you fully ensure that all is going with methane, but in real life, we are going to recover only 98% of the methane and 5% of the thing. Of course, we don't want to recover this, but this is the physical ex exchange or the total amount of the physical equilibrium of the membrane okay now let's go and add this set x they don't tell you maybe it's a separator you don't need to know you just need to ensure that you got this right here so maybe it's a common separator all the light materials go through the this stream right here all the heavy hydrocarbons go through this stream actually this is a stack you can see we want to recover C1, C2, and C3. Well, mostly C2 and C3. Those might go to a other petrochemical plant inside the, the compound or so. We don't need to know. So let's go and add separator. Now in this specific case, I'm going to use a SEP2. So this is gonna be SEP2. Why? Because we are going to be using molar fractions and SEP1, we don't have that. Let's verify this. We have split fraction and flow, no other way. But what happens if I know that my unit operations operate with molar fractions, or at least maybe I know the separator that works with those, with that purity. The, I, I know I have the date of the results on molar fractions. So it will be kind of complex to force SEP1 to do that. So that's why we have SEP2. So let's add this. And I added this block conveniently here to show you when this is useful. So right now it's very useful. So instead of 
me moving these or the letting these and then making a lot of effort, I just click here, reconnect and connect it. So this is set X. What we have here, okay, stated before, we have one gas line and one stack. Let me move this one right here. This is stack, no, this is product line C23, and this is stack. This goes to the stack line. Let me, okay. So I'm going to be adding these, all the products. I love to add all the products here, so it's easier for the user. Okay, this is just aesthetical. goes okay I think it's good enough now let's go to add all this it seems a little bit more complex than step one and it is but not that complicated so first focus on the stream what do you want to change let's change our c2 c3 ethane and propane we're not talking about, so this is important, what will be the split fraction? So they don't show you a split fraction, so you don't need to add it. Actually, if you add this, then you will be talking about half of the product goes through here and that half, well, let's say 25% of the inlet goes here and from that inlet, you can specify the molar fractions or the split fractions. We're not going to do that. We're just going to assume that we have the following specific data. We know that no exane, no obtain, and no obtain is going through this specification right here. Okay, so ensure you have this part right here. And stack, we know that no hydrogen, no methane, no ethane, and no propane is going through the stack. Let's see how it goes. Clean this. Okay. Go here and run this. Okay, simulation ready. Ready to rumble 